My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, where did this man get, man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given to him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor, except in his native place, and among his own kin, and in his own home. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're enjoying your 4th of July weekend. We have sunshine today. Thank you very much. Today's readings are about prophets in prophecy. We heard from Ezekiel this morning. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard the one who was speaking. Recently, I spent some time in a theological discussion with one who has studied Hebrew scripture and theology with his Jewish friends. We discussed that it is not by chance that God speaks when there is something important to impart to us. You see, as humans, it's easy for us to turn away or be distracted and not see things that are important because we can only see what's in front of us, and then only when our eyes are open. But we hear things coming from every direction. We cannot close our ears or turn off our hearing. And that's a great gift to us. Ask any parent, especially a mother. I believe it's a much greater handicap to be deaf than it is to be blind. God speaks to Ezekiel this morning and is almost apologetic in what he says. He says, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. Obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. They are a rebellious house. God was speaking to Ezekiel almost 700 years before the Messiah came. But he might as well be speaking today to us. Because if we're honest with ourselves, we are hard of face and obstinate of heart and rebelling against God to this very day. So, where is the prophet Ezekiel when we really need him? And how shall we know that a prophet is among us? There are some in both the Jewish and Christian communities that believe that the age of prophets ceased sometime before the birth of Christ. They claim that there's been no real prophetic voice in the world in almost two millennia. But who or what is a prophet? I kind of like this definition. A prophet is one who hears God speaking and delivers that message truthfully. 
In short, a prophet is a truth teller, which is why they've been so unpopular throughout history. I believe that there are still prophetic voices proclaiming truth to those with ears to hear. And that truth can be life-changing and life-saving if we can distill prophecy from all the other stuff that our ears are bombarded with. Where can we find prophetic truth? I believe it's really all around us. If you want to be transformed by the voice of God, the first step is to recognize that voice. This means being ready to encounter the voice of God wherever you are in whatever time it is. This means inclining not just your ear to God's voice, but opening your heart to God's presence. What is vital to both hearing and then doing God's will is humility, as we heard from Paul's reading today. For often God is speaking to us things that we don't want to hear and telling us things that we really would rather not do. In our Gospel reading today, Jesus in his own hometown faced that lack of humility. We have a tendency to be humble, or at least act humble, in the presence of those that we perceive to be our better. But Jesus was well known among these people. Is he not a carpenter, a son of Mary? He's no better than we. And hearing this from a neighbor, they were unwilling to hear and to open themselves to the voice of God. Mark tells us that Jesus could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. The reason for this was their unbelief or their lack of faith. What Jesus explains as lack of faith might also be described as an unwillingness to hear and acknowledge God's will and to cooperate with that. If we refuse to hear or to listen, there is little God can do in our lives. What can God do if we would listen? Pretty much anything. The Apostle Paul gives us an example of the change of heart if we are open to God's Word. Paul was a man convinced he was doing God's will when he persecuted the earliest disciples of Christ, acting with violence and anger to impose his will on the way he did not understand. But when Saul, as he was known then, heard the voice of the risen Jesus, he was changed and eventually became Paul, perhaps the world's greatest evangelist. He was content to listen and to proclaim God's truth, even in his weaknesses. We too can experience the voice of the Lord in our minds in our midst, if we listen. Even if our experiences are not as overwhelming as Paul's conversion, we too are called to listen and to proclaim God's truth. It's part of our baptismal promises to be priest, prophet, and king. We're called to listen and to be truth-tellers even though it might be unpopular. All we need to do is open our hearts and our ears, separate the clutter, and listen for what God is speaking to 